Okay, this is going to be an extension video on uh, rotary encoders. There's my little encoder there. It, ha it has 11 poles. It's hooked up to my motor, which is hooked up to my wheel via a 30 to 1 uh, reduction gearbox. So what it means is for every full revolution this wheel turns, it's going to be multiplied by 31, multiplied by 11, and multiplied by 4, because that's how many poles that you get per pole. Right, so we can work out if we do 31 times 11 times 4 comes to 1,364. So for every full revolution this wheel does, these wires will put out 1,364 pulses. So if that wheel starts spinning at any speed, means these cables pulse very, very quickly. Now I have had it hooked up to a Raspberry Pi Zero. I've tried an ESP8266. And I currently have it hooked up to an ESP32. Now what I found with these Wi-Fi type processors, they get busy maintaining the Wi-Fi. And when they're busy maintaining the Wi-Fi, they can actually miss counting some of these signals. So what I've done here is I have added a little counter chip. This is an LS7366R and all it does is counts the encoder. And my um, processor here via SBI can ask the counter where are you up to. So what I've done at the moment is my rotary encoder I have hooked up to my scope, I've also hooked it up to my little counter chip and I've hooked it up to my ESP32 board. So I'm going to be counting it in three places. So if I just start up on very low voltage here you can see the wheel is spinning very very slowly and you can see a very low pulse rate on the scope. If I actually run my software over here, my software tells me how many ticks per second the LS7366R is counting and how many the software is counting. When it's spinning quite slowly, you can see the numbers are about the same. But what happens is, as I start to dial this up a little bit, let's give it a little bit more juice, the wheel starts to spin a little bit quicker. You can see on my scope it's starting to pulse much quicker. And what happens if I come over here to my screen, what you'll find is that we're getting a higher number of pulses per second. And they're very close, but you can already see the software is starting to miss a few ticks when it's starting to get several hundred ticks per second. If I come over here again, and I turn this up a little bit more speed. See the wheels starting to spin a bit quicker. You can see the pulses are coming up much quicker on my scope. Come over here to my program you can see that we're getting a very consistent um, 809 pulses per second on the counter chip. But the software is only getting around the 790s. So it's starting to miss quite a few pulses per second. Come back over here. We really start to turn him up. Let's give him some, uh, let's give him some juice. Let's make him go really quick here. Up around that so he's really, really fly. We're getting really, really high pulse rate. When I come back over here, you can see that the, um, the counter chip is counting very consistently a very uh, 2099. But you can see that the software is counting much less. But you also notice with the software, the amount that it's counting is going up and down quite a lot. And that's because, just depending on the Wi-Fi, how busy it is to how many ticks it's actually missing. <coughs> So in conclusion, what I found is that you cannot maintain accurately the count on encoders turning at high speeds with a board that's also running a Wi-Fi. The only way to do it is actually having an external counter, which is what I've done here.